Hey guys, so this video is just clips from my Wonder Platinum video. I got the sections of Batman Arkham Asylum, City, and Night, and just put them together because I need more time for an upcoming video, or maybe not the next upcoming video, but the next three videos, and even the Yakuza Kiwami video, that was a section from the Wonder Platinum video. Same thing for the next three videos, but the video in October, I just need way more time for it. Batman Arkham Asylum will be my first platinum. I already got this platinum on other accounts, so this was mostly a walk down memory lane. The hardest trophies are 100%ing combat and predator challenges. I've always had a hard time with the predator challenges. Because of combat, I could control the outcome of my results by not getting hit a single time for all of them. And as long as I follow that rule, then I got the highest score. Some of the predator challenges are so specific with its requirements in the extreme versions that early on, I looked up a video guide on it because I was not about to spend hours in an entire day on one move I had to do on a specific henchman within a specific time frame it was a matter of trial and error and I eventually got all the requirements on all the maps now madness takes you forever the Riddler and his riddles and trophies. Now is it annoying that I had to go find every single riddle and trophy throughout the asylum? Yeah it was, but since I played this game a bunch as a kid, most of them I was able to find again and while it does feel useless to get them, it's sort of worth it when you get the message of Riddler getting arrested. At least there's something aside from getting the trophies that you get from collecting all of them. Once again! I have defeated you, Batman! There are two missable trophies, which most of the time I don't like because it means having to replay the game another time. Some games I do want to play, but others, for various reasons, I might not want to go through again. These two aren't that bad. Saving every person in the gas room, which should naturally happen. A guard or henchman will call for help whenever you pass them. And knocking out every single person at the party should happen if you just want to knock out people. Detective mode should always be on because there's no reason not to use it. It helps detect which guards have a gun or not. You can see weak walls and Riddler trophies from a far distance. It just helps with the game overall. Take talk. The story for Arkham Asylum is simple. The Joker is purposely caught by Batman to get into Arkham Asylum and does what he does best, which is create chaos and let out inmates and force Batman to put them back in their cages along with some notable faces. Scarecrow has the best fights even though it really isn't a fight. I had to go to the spotlight and shine it onto Scarecrow but being stuck in his dreamlike world and not getting seen by him was still really cool. A lot of the other boss fights play out the same which involves the battering, throwing a battering at Bane just before he charges, the Titan battles work out the same way, throwing it at poison items so that her shield can be opened up, and throwing it at Killer Croc at his neck to trigger electricity to make him go back in the water. These aren't bad, but it gets repetitive. The battering is the only gadget during combat that can be useful. The sonic battering is only useful for predator situations. Same thing for the explosive gel and bat claw. I always forget that the bat claw and freeze grenades during combat aren't available until Arkham City, so while the combat still feels good, it gets expanded upon in later games. You'll never beat me, Joker. I won't let you win. And then the Joker is great, especially when it's voiced by Mark Hamill. And Joker is just having a lot of fun, and during his fight, takes time to embellish in the moment and wave high at the helicopter at certain points, which would be his downfall. And the ending is where, depending on what you do, can have either Scarecrow, Killer Croc, or Bane come up and touch the Titan box as the post credit scene. I forgot why or how one pops up, but I still don't know what this meant. Based on future games, it seems that Scarecrow is the one that's canon, or maybe Rocks, they have plans for this scene to be important in the next game, but plans change at the last minute. I still love this game it still holds up and there are certain places where mobility feels limited but obviously it will get better in the next game aren't you supposed to be up on your feet and trying to stop me Batman Arkham City came out two years later and it made everything better. There was a slide button so that I can slide into grates rather than pressing to open it. Gliding was made better with diving down and then pulling back up for more gliding distance. Side missions were added so that it wasn't just the Riddler stuff. New faces, both villains and allies were present. 
So once again, the hardest trophies were the challenges now in the form of Riddler's Revenge. And since I played the Return to Arkham version, it came with all the DLCs, which most were a part of Riddler's Revenge, specifically Catwoman and Nightwing. Some of their Predator challenges were not fun to go through. Both played differently from Batman. Catwoman is a lot faster and sort of allows for some mistakes every now and then. But what's not great is for some reason, silent takedown animations seem to take longer for her. And so many of my fails came from this and I would either die or just just restart from frustrations and she doesn't have a glide so I couldn't conveniently land right next to a guy that I wanted to take out take the long route to take out the rest of the henchmen whenever I fulfilled all the requirements for Nightwing, it's also gliding. He has no cape like Batman and Robin, and his forward jump is a long jump. And so I had to figure out the timing on that, as well as figure out how to use his gadgets, as all playable characters have different gadgets. Police Brutality Extreme for most of the characters had one hard requirement. And like with the first game, I will give it a try, but after a certain point, it's time to look up a video guide. And then Top of the World Extreme for Nightwing was hell. Because of the triple headshot requirement, using the wrist dart and getting one hit takedowns didn't go according to plan because sometimes Times when I was clearly aiming for the head, it would somehow miss and I would have to restart over and over again until eventually I got it. And so you would think it would be over and the rest of the game would be fun and easy. But no, it didn't get any easier because of the campaign challenges, which were combining three maps and I had to complete all of them with the requirements in a row with modifiers that I hadn't used or else the game would choose one for me. And you know, a good amount of them were easy. But once again, the extreme versions with some good but also bad modifiers added to their frustration. And restarting also sort of sucks because if I had already cleared the first two maps and then the last one gave me the most trouble, I would then have to restart. But then restarting would mean restarting the entire challenge from the first map just to get to the last map which is the only one that was giving me trouble. So anyone going for this platinum, good luck. Hopefully you don't try to smash your controller because some of these challenges will have you thinking that Robin was a lot easier to play because it's like Batman but with different gadgets and Batman was obviously easier because I've played with him the most. There are side missions now and a lot of them allow for some of Batman's rogue gallery to pop up. The Arkham Assaults were fine, there were random acts of violence and will pop up after certain events. DER training at first was difficult especially the later ones but having played this a lot this wasn't too hard and you get the grapple boost which helps and makes gliding even better but the actual mission itself is fine. Get me out of here. It's that kind of attitude that gets you in these kind of situations. If you don't open this door. I'll kill you. Bane's side mission I thought was going to lead into something good in the end. After destroying the Titans around Arkham City, it turns out Bane had plans of keeping the rest of the Titans to himself and wants to crush Batman. But he locks Bane in the cell, which I think is ridiculous because you're trying to tell me that Bane just can't crush through that cell and come on out. Hello, Batman. Do you recognize my voice? Victor Zaz. In the flesh. Victor Zaz is the cold call killer and this one gets repetitive with having to trace his calls whenever you pick up. The only good thing I guess is hearing him tell stories about his first kill, why he continued to kill, and his first meeting with the penguin. Aside from this, it was easy knocking him out without getting caught. There are two missions that require finding a gadget. The freeze grenade or clustered freeze grenade is found only because of Harley's loose lips. And going back to the iceberg lounge to get the remote gadget. These were I guess not useless because you get to have some gadgets but it could have been used for something else. Finding Noir Freeze was relatively easy as long as you had detective mode on and listen in on comms and find a giant weak wall that can be broken near the cranes and then report back to Mr. Freeze. Real simple. This is the journal of Dr. Thomas Elliot. The identity theft story is interesting throughout the entire time because someone is killing people and wrapping their faces with a bunch of bandages and the further you go on, it seems that Bruce Wayne is the killer but that's not possible. It turns out to be Bruce Wayne but it's actually Thomas Elliot, a former childhood friend of Bruce and wants to drag his name and reputation down. I like this because of Elliot's commitment. What better way to ruin someone by actually being them? He gets away but one day Batman will get to him. Bruce Wayne. Deadshot is going around and killing people on his list and Batman not only has to track him but find the list of people that he had been hired to kill. Love that you already meet him at the start when he teases Bruce already being on his list. A lot of it is scanning and seeing where his bullet ricocheted off a building or something like that. In order to hit his target, I was able to prevent Jack Ryder from dying and his fight isn't really a fight because he one shots you if he sees you. So it was sort of disappointing but the journey to getting here was good and he was pissed off that he missed a shot so I'm willing to let this one slide. 
more tea, Batman. The Mad Hatter was a lot of fun. There's a cure for Batman and it turns out to be the Mad Hatter and puts you in his world and you're stuck in a different plane of existence and have to fight through multiple henchmen until Jarvis pops up and eventually knocks him out with his hat. It's a short one but Jarvis messing with you for a bit was just enough. It didn't have to be super long or have multiple investigations. Kind of already know that Jarvis is up to no good. I've been watching you Batman to see if you are ready. Asriel is the watcher and he shows up after story events. He talks and then leaves behind a symbol. After scanning four symbols, it leads to the church and explains that he's part of a group that's been watching Batman and is seeing if he's ready for whatever they have plans for him. It remains a mystery even through finding the truth, so it fits the mission, but it's also not the most exciting or interesting side story, but I am intrigued on what's going on. Could it be that while you were out doing what you do, I, the Riddler, snuck in and took all those poor stupid fools? And then the last one is the Riddler and is clearly the best one. He has kidnapped people from the church and there's now an incentive to collect and solve riddles because he doesn't reveal where the next hostage is until a certain amount is collected. And then when you're done with the last hostage, he doesn't have any more secrets to reveal which means collecting every single riddle and trophy which doesn't include the Catwoman trophies. You can't pick them up, only Catwoman can. But after all is collected, his hideout is near the museum and you gotta take him down under the wooden floor. A lot was put into this one and gave me a reason to collect every Everything. It's Batman! What the hell? Sorry to disappoint you boys. Catwoman is a playable character throughout the story and they're not anything too important aside from one major decision so it's not really needed but it is a nice break from the bat. She opens up the game trying to steal from Two-Face and after the prologue stuff Batman meets them and takes care of Two-Face. Catwoman then wants to steal from Hugo Strange but needs help from Poison Ivy and it doesn't go according to plan because Ivy hasn't forgotten about what Catwoman has done but she's willing to forgive her unless she saves her plant. During the vault section I chose to destroy the plant because Catwoman seems like the type of person to just completely clap back at someone who just tried to kill or threatened to kill her. She's then given another choice to either leave or help Batman who's stuck under a bunch of rubble. Leaving him will end the game which is a nice surprise. I remember seeing this on a YouTube video and was shocked that the game could even end at this point. I chose to save him because there was more to do and then her last part comes after the ending of the main game where she wants to leave but Two-Face wants his revenge and so she goes to knock him out one more time and this one felt the most useless. It was just sort of there and did nothing for me and sort of wish that this would have been more of a thing in future games but with a lot more time put into it. I guess the closest thing to this would be the dual tag team stuff in Arkham Knight. I feel I should thank you. Capturing Bruce Wayne is so much easier than Batman. The story this time around is that Hugo Strange knows Batman's identity and plans on releasing Protocol 10. I like Strange as sort of the main villain because he seems to be steps ahead of Batman and uses his secret to force him to search for answers when Strange has no real intention of revealing the secret. This game has some really good boss fights. Fighting Solomon Grundy at the museum was really cool because after uppercutting the penguin, there was nothing left to do, right? But then he just surprises you with Grundy at the end. Mr. Freeze has the best one depending on which difficulty you play on. It will decide on how many moves and gadgets you will have to use to defeat him and after one use, Freeze will freeze that method which forces me to use another one that I probably wouldn't have used unless it's this fight. The reason for the fight happening is sort of stupid. Freeze destroys the other cure just because but this fight makes up for it I guess. Ray Shao Ghoul's fight was also really cool having a drink from the chalice to keep Batman alive for a couple of hours and then gliding into the hole to fight. The different stages with the multiple versions of him to counter and how Having a head start with combos, the big version where he throws ninja stars and a sword was good and then the constant counterparts were pressing counter to block his attacks. All of it was really good. Joker is of course in this game and wants Batman to look and make a cure for him. The time within Joker turned into a curse and needs a cure. So he puts his blood within Batman so that he needs to look for a cure. Both are on borrowed time and Batman progressively gets worse until drinking from the chalice. Ask Mr. Freeze for a cure, destroys one and leaves one for Joker to steal. Joker throughout the game seems to look like crap but then at certain points look healthy and the reason for this is because of Clayface. He also has a good fight as well, throwing a bunch of freeze grenades to freeze him and then go inside of him and come back out to get the cure. Batman drinks the cure and was willing to give some to Joker because after everything that has happened, he still would have saved the Joker. Because they sort of need each other, Bruce needs a reason to constantly go out as Batman and the Joker needs someone to play with. Joker stabs his shoulder and drops the cure, leaving himself to die. And so while the Joker won't be around anymore to create headaches for Batman, there's a part of him where he feels that he failed because the one rule is to never kill and save everyone. And in this moment, Batman has failed. Killing the Joker off was a bold choice. 
The only question is where does the game go from here if Joker is the most well-known villain who can fill in the shoes and match the Joker. And lastly, the Harley Quinn DLC has some trophies. There's collectibles to destroy and collect. This takes place after the game and Batman has gone missing because of Harley. And Harley just wants revenge. Robin's fun to play mainly because of a shield bash. She blames Batman for letting Mr. J to die. And even in this DLC, you can tell the death of the Joker heavily affects Batman. He can't let go of letting a person die even if it was a villain. So when it came to what would be the 100th Platinum, I had two games that came to mind because they were games that were endings to their franchises and I decided with this one. Gotham's relying on one man to save us all. Batman Arkham Knight. Now did I plan on starting with Arkham Asylum and then ending it with Arkham Knight? Hell no. It just so happened to work out that way. Arkham Knight with all the DLCs was on sale for like $6. So I bought it and plan on playing it later. But when it came to what the 100th game would be, Arkham Knight was a perfect game to end on as it's the game to end Batman in the Arkham series. This is one of the few games that I will go for all the DLC trophies because of the special occasion. So where do I begin? I guess I'll start with the delayed trophies. There were some trophies that took a bit to pop up. Drifting 3 minutes with the Batmobile, Point of Impact, Flying Under 3 of the Bridges, Certain side missions, and even beating Scarecrow and New Game Plus all took probably about a good minute before popping up. I don't know whether this is a known issue or maybe it was my internet or I didn't have the updated version of the game there are 14 side missions the first four that i'm going to talk about pretty much serve the same purpose which is to get more wayne tech points the militia checkpoints watchtowers apcs and bombs are all okay the one with the bombs are different because it was originally an arkham knight side missions led by him but after a reveal it changed to deathstroke which felt shoehorn in as the boss fight if you're gonna have deathstroke in this game at least let him have his own side mission throughout the entire game and not just at the end and the fight isn't a hand hand combat it's a tank battle which is disappointing and it's not because of the batmobile i don't mind it it's deathstroke i would have preferred an actual fight the line of duty wanted me to save all the firefighters throughout gotham really simple nothing else to it hallelujah 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 the wicked demon has been slain join me children and let us rejoice in his eternal damnation Lamb to the Slaughter came in so late into the game that I didn't care about it. Deacon Blackfire kidnaps Jack Ryder because Ryder was snooping around when he shouldn't have and got caught. Deacon has a cult and I beat all of them up and sent him into the cells. Sort of felt like they needed one more side mission and just threw this one in here. Can't argue with the coin, Batman. Two-Face takes advantage of people leaving Gotham and decides to rob banks. The best part was being able to knock out Smash people without any consequences due to the alarm going off. It was always satisfying knocking them out and sort of wishing it was allowed for the entire time. But Two-Face notices that his people are missing and then it turns into a normal predator challenge map. Eventually caught up to him and took him out. I do like the Batmobile while it rides criminals that are in the backseat. Some start mouthing off and some even threaten Batman even though they're going straight into a cell. So that was a fun thing to have while driving to GCPD. Well, would you look at that? A new stuffed head for my cigar room. Someone get me a hacksaw. <laughs> the penguin has a weapons trade operation going on, and this was an opportunity to have some double takedown action. There are certain points in the game, or like with this mission, where Batman teams up with someone and there's a gauge for a double takeout, and it's the best thing ever. This sort of replaces the Catwoman episodes from Arkham City. Rather than having sections or episodes, have Bat members tag along when it's appropriate, just like with Two-Face caught up with them and destroyed his weapons. There'll be nothing but a charred stump when I'm finished with you, Batman. Firefly does what he does best and burns things and buildings down. This is like the APC missions, but Firefly is better because I don't have to deal with cars trying to bump into me and then having to look where the APC went. Firefly leaves fire behind trying to hurt you, which meant I needed to eject at the right moment to take out his wings from ever flying again.
Azrael is back and is still watching Batman, but now Batman has to test it by not getting hit a single time in combat, which was easy enough. It ultimately came down to me on whether to kill Batman because of what he was told from his group or don't kill him and start making his own choices. Alfred looked into him and it turns out he was brainwashed at a very young age and this group wants Batman dead probably because he's a threat to whatever they have planned. I went with not killing because it was way more interesting for Azrael to question why he was asked to do this rather than just being another villain just because he was told to be one. Everything you are, everything you have, it's mine, Bruce. All mine. Hush is back as Bruce Wayne entrusts a login to Bruce's computer, but doesn't go as planned and uses Lucius Fox for a login. Batman comes in and Hush wants Bruce Wayne and Batman decides to reveal his identity to Hush or Thomas Elliot. Thomas can no longer use Bruce against them anymore and realizes that he might have been an idiot for not figuring out that Bruce and Batman were the same. But within this time, it allows Bruce to throw him up and slam him on the table. I could see this being disappointing to a lot of people and I thought it was alright because what else do you do? with Hush. As far as I know within the Arkham series, he was just a surgeon and had others drop bodies for him. I don't think it was ever said he was a fighter or trained assassin, so I wasn't expecting to fight for a final showdown. Thomas is pretty much a psychopath, got his parents killed, and needs any reason to go after Bruce and his money. It just sort of fell flat after setting up the amazing ending that was in Arkham City to have him just kind of be slammed with one move and revealing the identity. There could have been some more things in here, maybe not an entire fight, but just, I don't know, maybe I don't know, just something else that wasn't just okay. Man Bat is just a tragic story. Dr. Kirk Langstorm and his wife wanted to find a way to cure deafness and thought combining the DNA of a bat and human would make the cure but it turned out to be a mistake. Kirk turns into a bat and murders his wife and it was up to me to find a cure for him. Kirk was told of the horrible news but the cure didn't work and he gets out after completing the mission and has to live life out as a man bat. All of this came from a good place but it turned into a real big tragedy. Pig happy pig glad pig gets to play with flesh make it look pretty after death <laughs> Professor Pig was the best one because it subverted my expectations. Professor Pig doesn't sound like a very scary or threatening villain at all, but Rocksteady managed to have him be a creepy serial killer who has the need to make the perfect body or everyone perfect by putting a pearl or most objects that don't belong in the human body. Finding six bodies with various different objects and tissue scars on all of them leads to him still working on a body and rather than normally knocking out his perfect creations, I had to ground take down all of them. What I thought was going to be a goofy character which he still is turned out to be a very memorable part of the game i did it i actually did it i mean of course i did good as expected and then the Riddler was the last one because of all the riddles and trophies. I got all of them but it was a lot easier because there's only 243. Arkham City had 440 so I appreciate that a lot. The only one that gave me trouble was the one near Riddler's hideout. I had to save the missiles on the Batmobile in order to use all of them on the last part where all the question marks appear and then shooting the rest normally. Riddler has Catwoman on the leash because she was caught stealing for him and now has to live with 9 lives. I had to find keys to free her from her collar and by solving puzzles that also included Catwoman in them. Most of these puzzles I looked up a video guide on. I did not want to spend a lot of time on these at all. And then there are some that include the racing tracks. Somehow the Riddler set up this racetrack for Batman to race with his Batmobile. And so after all of this, the Riddler comes out in a robot or sort of a mech suit to fight both Catwoman and Batman. Fighting him was fun because it's a tag team battle which includes double takedowns. Once again, this had a ton of time put into it and like in Arkham City, was good time to talk about the DLC trophies. There are 45 trophies which can pretty much be another game with a platinum. So I'll start with the Batmobiles and the Batmobile as a whole. I liked it even though I still prefer gliding throughout Gotham which is even better in this game. Driving around in the Batmobile was another fun way of getting through Gotham. Chasing after some people to reveal Riddler's secrets was always fun to hear them freak out. There are AR challenges tied to all the Batmobiles which are the 60s TV series, 89 Keaton, 08 Dark Knight, OG Arkham and BVS Batmobiles. For some reason, the 60s, 89, and 08 ones only require 33 stars, while the OG Arkham and BVS ones only require 21 
one stars either way it made getting these go by a lot quicker i only played the same races that only needed one lap and got three stars on all of them and luckily i didn't need to play every single race there were enough of them that i could get two or one stars for some of the races but it did get repetitive over time playing the same races over and over again these scarecrow missions are also tied to the batmobile and ar stuff and i got this trophy when i was playing the story didn't care to go for three stars because it only required me to beat all three levels there's even more AR challenges to do because of the hero and rogue challenges. I thought I was done with combat and predator challenge maps from Arkham City and Asylum, but nope, they're back in this. Luckily, I didn't need three stars on all of the maps and I didn't need to play any predator maps, which is what makes this game the easiest to platinum. I don't have to look up a video guide on what to do on a specific guard on a certain map. I could just get a high score on the combat maps and get 21 stars for Robin, Nightwing, Batgirl, Catwoman, Azrael, Red Hood, and Harley Quinn only playing the combat maps. The community challenge pack has two of the hardest trophies, Rec Room for a Killer and the Curtain Falls. I needed to defeat Killer Croc in the Iceberg Lounge, but the only way to get him to fight is to get at least a million score, which meant being perfect and not getting hit a single time. After failing a good amount of times, the only effective way of doing it was to start punching for a combo of 5 and then jump over, then punch, and then repeat. Get rid of any weapons like shields or the electric ones because they're just annoying to worry about. There is another option which is to be the best at this game at flawless free flow when i was looking up how others did this there was one video in which this person was the best at this game and flawlessly free flowed the entire thing but the jump and then punch method works croc comes out and that's when nightwing joins and it was easy from there because it was like the fight from his side mission and then the curtain falls wanted me to flawless free flow every round on the theater map with Batman, Nightwing, Robin, and Catwoman. This one was harder because I was trying to rush it. If I saw that there was a few enemies left, I would let my guard down and then get hit. Having to restart the entire thing again, the issue wasn't the game, it was me. I wasn't patient enough and would think I got this wrong only to be absolutely dead wrong. The flawless free flow bonus has to appear when it shows the numbers. If it doesn't, then something went wrong, which means you're going to have to restart. There were also story packs and honestly I would have preferred if more time was spent on these because most are maybe an hour or 30 minutes rather than AR challenges. Why not add more to do with the story packs? Harley's story is just saving Ivy. Along the way I beat up some guards and our combat is fun when the mayhem mode is activated. It's essentially a one shot move for every person that she fights. Red Hood takes down Black Mask by going through a bunch of his people. His throwing projectile was shooting his guns and it was fun ending a fight or combo by just shooting the last guy and there's clearly a trend with these where there's the main objective and there's a combat and predator room and area that you have to get through. Nightwing catches Penguin again. The only difference is that he's able to prevent his escape from GCPD. Since Batman is gone it's Robin's turn to take care of Two-Face and he does. And then Catwoman still wants some revenge even after defeating the Riddler by destroying more of his robots and stealing some of his money. Hey sad clown, turn that frown around. A Matter of Family was clearly the only one that had time put into it. I played as Batgirl and needed to save Gordon. There were collectibles to destroy and different ways of defeating enemies. The history of the park and how it was made was the most interesting part. Edward Burke built this park for his daughter Katie and she was going to die. He wanted her to see it before she passed. Doctors were telling him that she wasn't going to make it and then he met the Joker who used him to finish building the entire park and got Katie killed of an overdose. Katie died before seeing the park and so he wanted to be with her. Joker gives him a pill to ease away the pain he feels and Edward laughs to his death. It added a really dark lore to the park. It could have been any other park but this was added just to see how messed up the Joker was by using a man at his lowest point and then obviously you beat both Joker and Harley Quinn and save Gordon. I hope you suffer Batman like I've suffered. Season of Infamy was DLC side missions that honestly should have been part of the main game. Killer Croc is in a submarine that conveniently crashes near Gotham and Croc is on the loose again and I had to fight him along with Nightwing. I will avenge you Batman. You would do the same for me. 
Mr. Freeze once again is trying to save Nora, and I thought, really, this again for his side mission? But by the end, it turned into a heartfelt story of letting go. Nora doesn't want Victor dying or turning into a monster just because of her. She wants him to let go and spend her final moments with her, just letting her go, letting her die because it's better that way rather than trying to freeze the entire world or building a complete cryo cell or cage. Victor has to let go. Batman, why? <laughs> well, you found him. <laughs> Victim three, you're homicidal, just like me. Look back on this and you will find how madness lurks in every mind. Mad Hatter is back and he of course has to mess with their mind by going back to Arkham Asylum in the form of the Alice in Wonderland book. The guards even look the same as they were in Asylum. It was visually pleasing to go through some pages and then getting back to Hatter just to lock him up rather than having multiple people with bunny masks or whatever. How about messing with all of his mind but it doesn't work. I gave you a chance Bruce. A mistake. And the last one involves the League of Assassins. They're running around Gotham because there might be a Lazarus Pit lying around and Ra's al Ghul wants some to come back alive, which causes some discourse within the group. Some of the members want him back, while others want him out, causing a civil war. The leader of the ones that want him out is Nyssa. She is tired of seeing her dad constantly come back and changing for the worse. And I was in the middle of this and had to decide whether or not to keep him alive or destroy the remaining Lazarus Pit and leave him to die. I chose to let him die because Every time he comes back, he comes back more crazier and would be an issue to Batman later on. So it was a good time just to put him out of his misery, leaving Nyssa as the new person to lead the league and promising to leave their business out of Gotham. Now is this sort of killing a person? I mean, I guess it is because he chose to let him die, but it's Ra's al Ghul, man. He just needs to go. And that was all of the side missions, including the DLC. Overall, the side missions were good. There were some that I didn't care about, like the militia stuff and the watchtowers, the ones that still out were Professor Pig, Man Bat, Riddler, Mad Hatter, and the League. And then the rest are either okay or just good. You have no idea. Do you, Bruce? And then the story. I'll start with the Arkham Knight himself. I remember there being a lot of discussions on who this guy was. A couple of names popped up. But the one that a lot of people were betting on was Jason Todd. And throughout the game, they make it super obvious that it's him. Showing how Joker beat him and other clues. And he was alright. I didn't feel anything when he revealed himself. Skirko was the main villain. And I sort of saw him as the henchman. And he was just sort of there. The tunnel chase was cool, but I don't have much to say about him. Jason coming back at the end to help defeat Skirko was nice but it was also a quick turnaround for him and I honestly could have done without him even if it fed into Batman's fears it shouldn't have been there didn't you know Dark Knight you can't fight fear Scarecrow is back and is now the main villain which I thought was great because his fights in Asylum were great and he just wants to release fear toxins and got them. Not the most interesting motive but I like Scarecrow so much that I'm willing to forgive it and he causes a few people to make sacrifices like Poison Ivy. She could have been another villain and criminal that Batman throws in a cell but she plays a vital part in getting rid of the gas. She didn't want to be part of Scarecrow's plans and when he releases his toxins it jeopardizes Ivy's plants which is why it made sense for her to come back and help out but it required a lot of her and makes the ultimate sacrifice. She only did this for her plants. She didn't do it to help save others. She always cared about her plants. The Joker is still in this game despite being dead. Batman gets some fear toxin in him and starts seeing Joker in his head. I didn't mind this. I think there were some that didn't because they wanted the game to move on from him. But I like that after story events or some side missions, he gives his thoughts or just cracks a joke. So while I get why people didn't like him being in the game, I also just love him being there. Batman is forced to confront all of his fears. He lets down Jason Todd for letting him get caught and beaten by the Joker. And it comes back to bite him as the Arkham Knight. He sees Oracle die and thinks he's failed both her and Gordon for letting her be Batgirl. Which then caused her to be crippled by the Joker. Having to tell Gordon that she's been working with him as well. And then the biggest one being the Joker. He fears that he might become him. And the fear toxin allows Batman to deal with all of it. While Scarecrow loses in the end, he still won in terms of getting Batman's identity out. Which endangers not only him 
but others that have associations with him. After doing everything, Bruce kills himself and Batman to protect the others, and it cuts to Gordon narrating back on how the Batman died. Some time passes, Gordon's the mayor, Oracle and Robert are gonna get married, a couple and their kid is about to be robbed, when a bat-like figure shows up and puts fear within the criminals, ending the game. There are a lot of theories on what this ending means. I think he used what he learned from Scarecrow, and is now using fear as his main weapon to help Gotham, while also having everyone believe that he's truly dead, even though he's not. I like the ending, sort of wish that the journey was a bit better, but overall I like what Rocksteady was going for. All of Batman's fears have been building up all these years, and now he has to pay the price for it by quote-unquote killing himself and protect Gotham through a different way. 